one was a slow one. Greetings, everybody. This is Winnie Riggle. Hi, I am Physics, and we are in my redstone world right now. Yay! I was say, we're, we're not in Kansas anymore. <laughs> Toto. <laughs> is that what we're calling our world now? Kansas? Okay. No. No. <laughs> we are. We're in Physics Redstone world. And uh, yeah, I brought you here because I wanted to show off some designs that I've been working on uh, for a fully automatic azalea tree farm. Yay! Okay, lead the way. Okay, so the first farm, I, I mean, I have different generations of all these, and it really started with the fact that Winnie wanted to get cobble and trees. <laughs> and so I do, much, have, yeah. I do have designs like that. But then once I figured out actually how to do designs like this, and I don't know if this one works or not. Um, yeah, okay, here, on and off, maybe. Y'all remember um, when I was telling you physics builds like 15 versions of every farm? This, this is what I'm talking about. <laughs> Look at this. How many freaking tree farms are there? There's like 20. Okay, so I put... Okay, I've got it had an automatic so it does this was this is the both it's a tree farm and cobble and so when you're waiting you're always going to get cobble <laughs> and azaleas don't form all that often and so this way you just get cobble and for every one chest you end up getting or maybe this two chest in this yeah there's two chests for every two chest of bone meal you'll get two pretty much like a chest and a half of cobble and then nice. the rest so you get two chests full of stuff and it'll be like a chest and a half full of cobble and then about five or six stacks of of dirt and then about not quite two rows so like 18 so 17 stacks of wood with two stacks of a bow meal and so that's that's this generation but there's a couple of things that i ended up tweaking from this which we'll kind of learn about the concepts i'm doing so we'll move on and this has a very okay. standard stone generator yeah so waterlogged stairs piston we'll talk about why that wall underneath there is so important in a little bit yes and then this is just a shut off on this side. So when the when this is at a bone meal, then this just turns it off. But there's nothing else special about this stone gen. Although, yeah. Although we'll go into more detail then on. Or do you want to jump over there? I have a little demo area about concepts. Or you um, want to see the other one run? And then... Well, yeah, yeah. Let's talk about the stone gen, and then we can get more complicated. So yeah. Let's go over to the stone gen explanation because I made her show me. Okay. So I had... Yeah. So what happens is that water will run. And when water runs, if there's lava on top of it, it can either... If it's not running and lava touches here, that's going to turn into cobble. Mm -hmm. But if the water is actually running, then it'll turn into stone. I'll get a stone and then cobble. All right, so if the water's pouring straight down, let's say you've got a water stream that goes down here, but it's not going out like towards you, cobble. Yeah, so the blue, the blue wool is representative of water in case that's unclear. <laughs> and, the, and the red wool is your lava source. Yes. Right, yeah, okay. So the thing is, is that we wanna make sure that the water always pours in this direction and there's enough time that passes so that it'll form stone. Yes. But when you have a wall underneath it, that's gonna be your trigger. So when stone occurs, you see this light goes on. Mm -hmm. And if you have, I'll put a little lever here. So if you put, if you give this a signal and you got the piston head over it, the light doesn't go on. So there's this, the piston's not gonna trigger anything. So like if you put an observer under there, the water running and the piston head movement will all trigger an observer. Okay, and that'll so give we you- wanna, Yeah, we only want a signal when there's stone there. Only want a signal when the lava and water have officially made stone. 
and that's when you get that light. Yep. Front, front, there we go. Light goes off. Light goes off. Nice. Yep. So it's a it's a definitely stone only generator. It is a stone only generator. Yes. Yeah. That's pretty cool. There's a way to break it, but I'm not going to say how. No, no, let's not <laughs> say we did. Okay. So this, all of these tree farms start with a stone generator. Yes. And I want it to all, like, I've purposely made it so the stone generator will get stuck at some point, and there'll be 13, or there'll be some sort of hard stop, um, like a grindstone, that keeps it from moving. So that right. it ends up being, there's stone in here. And then at that point, I do have a separate trigger, and that trigger is like the really cool thing that I came up with. So how okay, about we go... Let's go look at that. Yeah, yep. let's go look at that. So we'll look at the single farm here. Oh, that's not the right one. It's the double one. See, they have so many, I get lost. <laughs> okay, let's see. I put them back to back. Okay, here, they're over here. I have a double one. So these are... kind of made a ring around them. <laughs> And then I was like, oh, look, there's open space. I'll do this one. I should number like what iterations these are. So here's a double one that creates a uh, double azalea trees because I was trying to become more efficient. And here's the single yeah. one that you can you can see pretty well. Yeah. Okay. So you yeah. can see all the bits. And we'll turn this one on by coming around and getting to the chest. And... You just throw some bone meal in there. Here, unless okay. you wanted to start it. So I threw bone oh, meal in there. Good. And that automatically starts it up. And so you come here okay. and you've like, got your awesome generator. Right? Stone generator. You Generating get. stone with a little wall underneath, just like we looked at. Mm hmm And I'm, I'm, using, I'm using the scaffolding to keep the water from running out. Because that's very important. It can't run out. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um... So the cool thing I have here is that when it gets stuck, like right now, you'll see it's stuck, and then that power rail blinks. And the beauty of that is the stone gen will automatically keep moving, keep moving, keep moving until it's stuck. And then when it's stuck, it actually gets a signal from the starter moss that I have hidden under here. Can we, I'm not sure if we can see the starter moss on this one. You can see the starter moss on the on the other design. Okay, here's the starter moss right here. I made it a little hole for it. So okay, nice. right right here is the little starter moss, and it gets cleared away when the piston pushes out, so it can tell it to to turn the other. It does it does its moss thing. Right. <laughs> and under here is hidden. Uh, you've got a dispenser that dispenses one single piece of bone meal into the starter moss. Ah, okay. <laughs> and, the, and the thing about that is, like, it's a waste. If you do anything more than one bone meal to the starter moss, you're just wasting bone meal. That's why there's some extra complicated stuff right here, just to make sure that it only gets one bone meal. One bone meal. But that one bone meal will make the dispenser go off, and that triggers back over here. And that triggers this power rail to go off. Ah. And the reason for that is that the only thing is like, I only want it to go off if there's stone in there. Otherwise, I don't want a false piston mo head movement. Because right. that could accidentally cause cobble. Not all the time, but occasionally, and that will break this. So, it's waiting. Yeah. So, like, it got stuck there for a second. When I say stuck, like, since there's only one here, it's really s slow, but it's only one, it's like one redstone tick. But that's enough that it would generate cobble. Or it wouldn't start over again. And so, the is the scaffolding... Carrying that 
signal? No, the scaffolding literally is keeping the water from flowing. Water and okay. it and it's my secret entrance to come down. Come down mm -hmm. here. Ah, okay. <laughs> to get into the chest collection area. Okay, I see. And then where all the trees in dirt are. Yeah. 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 So I did this just purely out of wanting like I part of what was happening is I had glass here and I kept running into the glass and I had to walk around it. And this way I could just run right through it and not get clipped by the glass. Always it's always out of necessity. I kept <laughs> running into a wall, so I made it transparent. Okay. Exactly. Well I, yeah, exactly. And it holds the water back, so it's great. That's perfect. Yeah. Prefecto. Okay. So the so basically for folks who don't know, one of the things you can potentially get on moss if you bone meal it is there there's a run an azalea plant and if you bone meal an azalea plant you get a tree 90 however many percent of the time yep and that is the source is right there there's one yep and then it pistons them out and then what's telling the tnt to fall it's the it's that famous it's the trigger again with the um the scaffolding. Okay, so if you come under here, like you don't have to worry about getting blown up because we're in creative. We've got yeah. the stone wall underneath, and that when it update, it'll create an update anytime the block on top of it moves. Okay. And ah, so okay. that pistons out. That creates the piston to move, which will then change the base of the scaffolding. Okay, so when a tree grows, it turns that moss block into dirt. Right. Right? It turns into a solid block. Or solid block. Yeah, so it turns into dirt. And when that and dirt... So when that dirt moves, it updates that wall, updates, sends a signal. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And so you have... So this starter moss down here, when it goes off, it will definitely change the stone into moss, but it may or may not grow something on top of it. So that's why there's a double, on the other side, there's two dispensers. There's a dispenser going into the moss and then a dispenser on top. And they will go off eight times. But if there's something on top of the bottom moss, it's not gonna waste yeah. any bone meal. Okay. So this design ensures that it really is gonna use the least amount of bone meal possible to get the azalea tree. Now, the only way to make it less is that if it if you could tell if there was an azalea tree or not. Yeah, but you can't. And I figured out a couple ways to do it, but it just became unwieldy and unreliable. So you might as well bone meal it and clear it. And if it's an azalea when you bone meal it, it'll be a tree. Yes. Yeah, there you go. So you can waste the worst you can you waste three bone bone meal for non azalea, um, but generally you're only wasting probably one bone meal on average. That's not bad. Yeah. Oh, that's right, because it doesn't use it if there's nothing there to bone meal. Yeah. Because like it'll waste the most is if nothing gr if like. That one has a if, if the stone when the stone is turned into moss if nothing is on top of it that uses the most bone meal and it's not an azalea tree yeah but i wanted to make something as simple as possible all right so that and what's happening is when the stone is generated it's hard to see, so let's come over. We kind of still watched it, watch for work for a little bit. I had a little demo area. Do you have an idea where I put my demo area? Right underneath you. <laughs> um, not this one. No. The other one. 
Oh, here it is. Oh, oh, yeah. It's, Here's all the principles that are are used, and we've we've discussed okay. this one here, but just to kind of demonstrate. This is the water one to ensure that uh, once stone is generated, it'll go off. And if it's just empty water, you can see nothing happens. And then when stone is generated, then that provides a signal That's or a awesome. signal update. And this right here was like the hardest part <laughs> to come up with, I guess. <laughs> Which I think is fantastic. <laughs> I Because you can't put... I mean, usually you would have a redstone repeater. Like a, right? And But I love that this whoops. is observers with water and a rail. Like, how great is that? <laughs> yep. Because if I could put if I could put a redstone repeater right here, then I could. But it's just Not instead of water. The, but yeah. it pops off, and so I had to figure out something else to travel a signal through. <laughs> you having Beautiful. fun, Winnie? <laughs> yeah, I am. It's cool. Redstone's weird. It's awesome. Yeah. So, and we talked about here the stone generator, and yes. so it automatically pushes. But right here. I'm going to clear my inventory so you can see it. And when it pushes through, that actually creates the update. I have, oh, did you pick some up? No. I did, but I put them back in there. Oh, it doesn't matter. I just was like, I wanted to show that there's eight. So it'll go off eight times. There we go. In my inventory, I now have eight. And I also above, I'm showing that if there's nothing to bone meal, or if it's blocked, then it doesn't waste any. So the top yeah. one still says 64 because there's nothing to bone meal. Yay. So this and is... this is also the um, the signal traveling up the scaffolding, too. Yes. So when you place this here, when that piston moves, you could see the base of the scaffolding change shape from supported to unsupported. And when that happens, that makes the light go off. There we go. And that... And that's what I use to trigger the TNT. That's so cool. Yeah. So that's why you see all this scaffolding around is that I'm sending a signal up. Yeah. That's how you move redstone so. up and down. It's pretty cool. <laughs> and these are, so this is the basics. And what will happen is when this comes through, we run out. Yay. Yeah, I think we ran out of our <laughs> It's good. See, it works as designed. <laughs> That's good. It stopped. You ran out of bone meal. It stopped. Yay. There was a reason for it to stop sometimes. I was having problems actually because I was using the wall technique. And that's what I have here is I have the wall. But occasionally the trees would update and new leaves would appear. And then that would cause this to get out of timing. Oh, the wall would up. It. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And they're very specific. Like, they need to be set in this t in these locations. Like, this needs to be down when this, like, this is being triggered. So it's already triggered down. But, like, when it starts again and the resting position will be up. So I'll put some more bone meal in. And you'll be able to see. So the sequencing. Alright. So what, what happens is that when this stone moves through, it triggers the burnout sequence. And that burnout sequence, when you put a redstone lamp next to it, will stay solid. And it has a signal when it starts and it has a signal when it ends. But I only want the signal when it ends at after the burnout to then trigger the pistons. And that's why I have the observer moving into glass and then coming back when it comes back up. That's the end cycle. And that's when the pistons get triggered. Do you see what I'm ah. talking about? Yeah. So you take two signals and on and off. And you only for a, a you know a start of the burnout cycle with the 
with the redstone torch and then the end of it and this will take the signal at the end of, of that it's firing distance yeah mm -hmm. and then as soon as those pistons finish firing then this little observer is actually what's triggering the dispenser for the starter bone meal and as soon as that starter bone meal is done that tells it to come back here and start the whole cycle over again oh. it's quieter now <laughs> yeah much more okay, quiet so this is the double yes yeah, the double this is a double so it's the same farm, it's just two of them. Right. Which, thus, the more complicated signal to fire the piston. Well, it's the same. It's actually triggered the same exact same way. It's the same way as, as the single one. And that's kind of why I, know, I just... There's more redstone on the double. Oh, well, it's, this one's hidden. This is... The only the extra redstone you're seeing is just to get the second heads to fire. Yes. Yeah. But the whole, all the triggering for um this this is the same. And Okay, yeah. The trick is when you're firing pistons, you do need to set your repeater to have one tick. So like it starts with one tick, so actually two ticks. Yeah. Otherwise, you'll get a f okay, and this is for Java only. Um, because if you give you the one, it'll give you a fast tick, and it won't pull back. Uh, with sticky pistons. And here. Uh -huh. So on these designs, I have sticky pistons here because you can't put pistons right next to the tree or it won't grow. Oh, interesting. So, but it will grow if there's wood next to it. So you, oh, and absolutely. that's why I use different wood to de designate this as part of the system versus what the wood that's being created. Yeah. Uh, and that's also why I put spruce here. Like, this could be wood. But pretty much, like, so I use spruce. But these corner ones, you're better off instead of using wood, using leaves. Otherwise, you have a harder time for stuff growing for some reason. So that's why I have, yeah, that's why I have spruce there. One is you can kind of see through it, but you have, you can't have anything that's not tree related in those blocks, or oh, okay. it breaks your or system. It won't grow. And those are some of the engineering constraints of like why like why there's like an extra hopper here because you just you can't put the chest right next to it yeah. it's got to be out by one yeah and that makes sense mm -hmm. cool so this was a cobblestone farm but she ended up refining her tree farm that's my favorite part although there's still the cobble version of the tree farm there is it's just i have one this one here and it's just not as efficient but it does work yeah <laughs> and if you let's see if you swap positions Like, right here for the trigger. Yeah. Like, if you, if it gets off, like, for some reason... Here, I'll, I'll do it. If this observer is in the wrong position when it starts, like, right here, it will create occasionally... Let's give me some bow meal. It'll either break it entirely, but it should just start creating stone. Oh, that's why. Oh, because it's in the wrong place. Oh, yeah. 
That's definitely stone. Yep. And because the timing is off, then because, okay, so it's because the timing is off on this, and I have it set that the dispenser will only, dis it'll only dispense once. So there's nothing to trigger it at the correct time. So it stops. So if y'all end up, if you end up building this and it just stops for no reason, it's probably because this piston's in the wrong, in this, the wrong place. Yeah, the observer is in the wrong observer. place. Yeah. But you can see how they got the extra stone. When I had, when, if I created, if you move this, actually, I'll do it this way and break it. All right, it'll start running again. This will start creating stone. It should. Nope, it just broke it. Oh, I know why. <laughs> but this is the beauty. Like, you just only want it to work, right? Yeah. So. And I have a button here. And the only time you need the button is that if you broke it. <laughs> if you did something and you want to start the whole sequence again, then you just hit, hit that button. button. Otherwise, it has it on and off. <laughs> okay, cool. Good. It's always nice to have an emergency restart button. Like It is, it is. Because otherwise, you, when you turn it on and off, you have to, like, flip it, keep turning it on and off. And instead, the button works great as a little reset. And the off does work. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah, my ru my rule is that all farms need an off button. Yes, and as like I like to create an automatic off. So if you're at a bone meal, then then it's gonna turn off. Sweet. Okay. So I guess it, I mean it looks complicated. It's hard just to see what things are happening, but it really is just a cycle of events. Create uh, the stone. Convert the stone to moss. Bone meal the moss to make sure you get an azalea. And if you get an azalea, it grows it up into a tree. And then you shove the tree over and blow it up with a TNT. Yep. Nice. And keep repeating that cycle until you're out of bone meal. <laughs> awesome. So I guess the last thing is to say, um, if folks want her to do a more detailed kind of I guess block by block tutorial of a simple tree farm. Let us know in the comments. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be like a complete block. I mean, I'll do it block by block, but I won't necessarily be more detailed. It'll just be block yeah. by block. I won't just be block by block. I might not go into the, the hows and whys. <laughs> no, just like, here's how to build it one block at a time, I think. Yeah. Because we've gone through most of the theory. Like, folks should be able to replicate this ish. Yeah, I mean, that's like, if you know some of the concepts, then you can create your own, you can kind of create your own designs or do something with it in a unique ways, which is kind of what I hope for. Cool. Well, I have good news and bad news. Good news is you have really amazing working tree farm. <laughs> bad news is we have to say goodbye. Well, I have a question for you. Like, which one do you like, the single one or the double one better? I kind of like the single one better. But that's only because I understand it better. Okay. Like, yeah. <laughs> I don't need the second row because the single one, like, oh, there's the tree, there's the thing, there's the generator, there's the signal, there's the pistons. Like, it makes sense to me. <laughs> I gotcha. Um, there's, I believe, I keep testing them, and so far, I'm, they're... They're about equally efficient in terms of bone meal usage for the number of uh, the number of wood about the amount of wood and dirt you get. So oh, I that's the, cool. the double sh may be a half time. Like I'll have to check, but I may be getting a little bit more. The other thing too is like some of the other designs you might see, you're only getting two pieces of wood for every tree grown, and this one you get almost four, like three point nine pieces of wood per tree grown Ooh, that's good so that's another reason why i like i played around with this is like i i want to get the most out of growing these azaleas 
Yeah. <laughs> oh, and I guess the other thing to point out is both farms do recycle the moss into bone meal, mm -hmm. but you will need an external source of bone meal to run them. Absolutely. Like when you run it, like that double, the double chest, you'll end up getting five stacks. And that's certainly not a replacement for a double chest. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so you'll need you'll need another you'll either need to make a bone meal farm or have a skeleton spawner and an endless supply of bone meal. Yes, which is not that hard to do. Like, yeah, that's no. pretty. Yeah, yeah, not too bad. I mean, but yeah. I say well, that in a world where we don't have a skeleton spawner yet, but you know. Yeah, but we have a moss farm. We do, and yeah. that is a great bone meal generator. So yeah, you'd need something like that—a moss farm dedicated to bone meal generating. Yes. All right. Ooh. Well, okay. I am physics, and thank y'all, and we are.